Thank you. I would like to call to order the Linda Hop School District 92 Board of Education meeting at 5.30 p.m. May I have a roll call, please? Yes, you may. Good evening, everyone. Board member Joyner Harris. Present. Board member Griffin. Present. Board member Hannah. Present. Board member Dawson. Absent. Board member Morris. Present. Board member Taylor. Absent. Board member Williams Wolford. Absent. Uh, board member David. Present. Thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, please turn yourselves off or on silence. We're going to pause. Of course, this is to me all I can think of is just pausing for this nation, we're suffering again during this pandemic with this new variant. So let's just be silent on behalf of those that are suffering with COVID right now in our nation, in our state, in our world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Spotlight on success. Today we are having our spotlight on success of, with two of our amazing new teachers this year with Ms. Triplett who's teaching our amazing third grade students and Ms. Blake who is doing a fabulous job teaching our second grade students. They are Lindop homegrown. They came as paraprofessionals and now they are helping our community by teaching our future leaders of tomorrow. And I will hand it over to them. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ms. Triplett, and I currently teach third grade. I stumbled across Lundop because I am actually a Lundop alumni. I graduated from Lundop in 2005. I began as a paraprofessional here when I started for pre-K. Then I began doing some subbing, um, and then I had Dominican. Um, there we decided to pursue our education um, to become teachers. And we currently graduate in May, so that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> I began teaching sixth grade um, in the school year of 2020. And then this year, I was offered the opportunity to teach third grade. I think what is most rewarding is being able to be a part of student success, having that positive impact on their life, um, building strong relationships with them, and just gaining their trust. Um, a lot of them. They look for safe places outside of the home and just being able to provide that type of environment for them is rewarding to me. Um, my why for teaching is just being able to help my students and keep them on that path to success. Um, having them come every day with a smile on their face is rewarding. Them not wanting to leave and just having them trust in me is most rewarding to me and is what keeps me going. Also just being inspired by some of the teachers that was here um, when I was here, Coach Nibisu was my track coach, and Ms. Nancy, she was here, Ms. O. So just being able to still see them here just tells a lot. So um, with my Lindon family, I love working here because everyone is supportive here, um, very close-knitted. It's always been that way when I was a student and as well as now teaching. Um, and I think that's what inspires me the most and 
makes me want to come to work because I'm tired of people that will continue to encourage and motivate you. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, but I am so thankful for this opportunity. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brianna Blake, or Miss Blake, and I am one of the second grade teachers here at Lindau Elementary. I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about myself and my story. I graduated in 2019 in undergrad from Albion College in Michigan. Like most post grads, I was looking for a position immediately, and it was to my luck that Lindau was looking for a paraprofessional in third grade. I began the paraprofessional year through um, the third grade beginning um, from about August until early October. After um, I was accepted the long term sub position as a teacher for the Sunday school teacher. Most people think of long term sub as just making copies and doing the same here and there. However, I really wanted to take ownership um, of this position and I wanted to explain to students that no matter who was in front of me, their education journey mattered. So I created math test sessions. I met with the other fourth grade teacher. I did peer teacher conferences. I did everything as if I was a teacher so that students can still stay on course for their fourth grade year. After returning, um, the pandemic hit and I finished my um, paraprofessional position here online. However, I was then encouraged to um, take my education further and enter into the alternative black teacher program at Dominican with Ms. Tripper. We graduated in May, my last day. Um, after looking back, um, now being a second grade teacher, um, permanently, I have to say that I am so grateful for staying here at Lindau um, and wanting to be here. I'm able to make personal connections with my students and my parents. Um, it's important for me to, to show them that someone like me, a young Black African American female, can become a teacher um, and could become much more if I wanted to get my doctorate. Um, and it just makes me very reluctant and very happy because I'm able to show students how important their education is how important it is to be present, how important it is to receive an education, keep going, don't stop, and no matter who's in front of you, your education matters. Um, this is my story. My name is Ms. Blake, and if you see me, feel free to pray to say hello. Thank you. You are definitely best. Okay. <laughs> That's who she is today. That's who she is. Come on. Oh, that's who she is. Yes. 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 Wait, 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 wait. Yes, you are what? You are accountable. I like it. You're a strawberry? All right. You're a strawberry. Let's go. You are happy? Okay. Make yourself up. Please don't mess up my, my copy. You are a good student. I can Okay, and that concludes the presentation. Thank you, Board of Education, for allowing us to grow our own. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. Any comments from any board members? I'd like to say that I'm really impressed with their dedication and with their, say, interest in the children and putting the children first. And I think it's great that they're pursuing these options and that we're into growing our own. I think that's going to be a big advantage to this school. Thank you.
What an opportunity for these young adults, I'll tell you. So thank you for giving them an opportunity. Uh, can I say something really quickly? This is board student board member David. Um, I have known Ms. Triplett for a while now and Ms. Blake. And when I tell you, they are two dedicated teachers. And I, they, during this process, while becoming their own teachers in their own classrooms, I had them come in and sub. And when I say they were the favorite substitutes in every class, we all wanted them. And when we found out that they were going to become teachers, everybody was begging them to be in our classrooms. And so I just know personally, along with the rest of the student body about how amazing these students, how amazing these teachers are to us as a whole. So I thank you all. Thank you. Moving on, to, moving along to public comments. There are there any, none. There are none. Yeah. Thank you. For your request, Dr. Jackson. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Board of Education, community members, staff, administration. Um, thank you all so much. We had a FOIA request from Channel 7, and they wanted to know how we managed uh, remote learning with our technology, and that FOIA request has been satisfied. Thank you. Upcoming events and correspondence. Do I understand it, Ms. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Secretary right. Hanna? So, Madam name? President, we don't have any correspondence, and um, the upcoming events you guys can read the following. Thank you. Consent agenda. I need a motion. Consent agenda, please. Board Member Hannah, um, I make a motion that the board approve the consent agenda, including the Lindop District 92 payroll for December 22nd, 2021 through January 18th, 2022, in the amount of $441,204. And 30 cents. Lindop District 92 accounts payable for December 2021, December 22nd, 2021 through January 18th, 2022, in the amount of $190,430.94. Activity, activity account reconciliation for January 2022 and second read of review and uh, monitor cycle section six, instruction policy 660, curriculum content. Curricular content six one eighty five remote ed educational programs responsible use and conduct six three ten high school credit for non direct exp experiences course substitutions and re entering students with district edits with district edits as presented and a second please and Cheryl Griffin I second any discussion comments or changes there are none roll call please. Board Member Griffin? Yay. Board Member Hannah? Yay. Board Member David? Yay. Board Member Williams Wolfer? Yay. Board Member Taylor? Absent. Board Member Morris? Yay. Board Member Dawson? Yay. And Board Member Joyner Harris? Yay. Motion carries. Old business presentation on FY21 audit. Good evening, Board of Education, staff members, administrators, and community members. Um, tonight, we were supposed to have a presentation by Chris Scullett. Um, we had an unforeseen break in his tooth, and he needed to go in for a root canal. Before he did that, though, however, he did create a board memo that is in your packets. Um, it gives a very good brief highlight of the audit that he was going to present tonight. He will be coming back to our next board meeting to go over this. He did apologize for it, but he just didn't feel up to coming with that root canal uh, with it. Um, however, the snippet that you have on there, we do want to go over um, that Lindop is still in the recognition stage, which is the highest that's in his memo, which is an excellent thing for the district. And then also in there, Dr. Jackson did pull out the financial profile page through the AFR and we wanted to highlight the cash on hand that the district has, um, which is a little over a year's fund balance on it. So those were the two highlights that we wanted to kind of bring out. And at the next board meeting, Chris Scullett will be here to uh, present to the board. 
Any questions from any board members? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Baranek. Recommendation to approve the bond issuance for completion. Might as well stay up there. I need a motion, please, uh, that the board approve to apply for bond issuance for completion of the building life safety projects. Cheryl Griffin. I make a motion that the board approve to apply for board issuance for completion of building life safety projects, not to exceed a total amount of $6,500,000 to be placed on the June election ballot. And a second, please. Brian Dawson, I second. Okay, Mr. Peranek. Good evening, once again, Board of Education, staff, administrators, and community members. We do have Andy Art available um, on this um, Zoom link on it. So if there is any questions for the board, just this is the next step of the process is to have the board formally approve, moving forward to putting it onto the ballot. And then moving forward then would be a resolution coming in February, kind of finalizing what it would say on the ballot. That is why we have Andy online. So if there is any questions, he can go over um, the whole process on it. You do have the most current updated um, packet that was sent by Andy. It was in board book, explaining once again, the impact of the issuance of the potential 6.5 million uh, dollars for our life safety and operations and maintenance capital projects that are out there. Uh, once again, we want to stress that this is a zero tax increase to the taxpayers. That's the big push on this one here. Um, Andy, are you out there available for questions? Yes, I'm here. I can, I can hear pretty well. So if anybody has any questions, I'm, I'm happy to go over any part of this that um, we previously discussed. Yeah. I know the Board of Education, we've gone over this yeah. numerous times, and I was just wanting to see if board members have any questions because if we don't we can discuss whether we want to proceed with this if anybody have, has any questions you see what the motion is right now the motion is to support the referendum does anybody have any inertia any issues regarding this uh recommendation okay there are none roll call please board member griffin yay Board Member Hanna? Yay. Board Member Dawson? Yay. Board Member Morris? Yay. Board Member Taylor? Yay. Board Member Williams Wolford? Yay. Board Member David? Yay. Board Member Carla Joyner here? Yay. Motion carries. Moving on to new business. Presentation on data and discipline. It's Dr. Jeremiah, Dr. Betts, Mr. Baranek, Mr. Kenobi, and Mr. Ballantyne. Yeah, this uh, Nurse James's slides are coming up next. So if we can, or you want to skip ahead? Oh, so, uh, Nurse James, yes, please. Thank you. We just like to give a little data first. Oh, so from, no, from Miss James, Nurse James, thank you. Nurse James, you're supposed to be in the screen somewhere. <laughs> I am. When I, I said, I, I, I looked back there, I said, you know what? She looks familiar. <laughs> yes. What was the scrub top on? Welcome. Yes. Thank you. So you're real. I'm Wonderful. Real. Yes. <laughs> um, good evening, Board of Education, administrators, staff members, community members. Um, my presentation today will not be as long winded as all my other ones. Um, I just wanted to give an update on the COVID data that we're currently seeing. Um, I know that we're um, kind of a really quick data point that we look at our positivity rates. Um, so just kind of wanted to break it down. Um, Cook County's positivity rate, this is for last week, um, was 19%. Um, we're expecting this week for it to start kind of coming down a little bit after the holiday and after that really big surge that we were experiencing. Um, Broadview's positivity rate for um, 
this is also for last week, um, the average was 17%. Um, this week, I looked at it today, it's already at about 11. So it is also kind of trending downwards. Um, and then our positivity rate here at Lindap for last week was 4%. Um, so all three of these numbers are taken as the number of tests that we've done and then the number um, of positive tests out of the total tests that we did. Um, I did have a little more vaccination data on here. I think I updated on the Google Doc, but it didn't make it to this one. Um, but I do have those numbers as well. Um, our number of staff who are fully vaccinated, um, that means who have received two doses of either the Pfizer or Moderna, or the, um, the one dose of Johnson & Johnson is 78 staff members, which is 86% of our staff. Um, and then we have 62 of our staff of those 78 who have received their booster. Um, in terms of our students who have, um, who are currently fully vaccinated, that's 140 of them, um, which I believe is about 35% of our total student population. And then we have another, I believe 60 or 70 or so that um, have one dose. So that will be considered fully vaccinated within the coming weeks. Um, we are currently planning another vaccine clinic here. I know we've already had a few. This one um, is going to be for all children who are eligible. So ages five and then five to 11 and then 12 and up. Um, and then staff can come get vaccinated if they haven't yet. And they can also receive their booster if they want. So it's just kind of, kind of be like a one-stop shop. Um, so once IDPH um, gets back to me with open dates for them, we're gonna do that. Um, and all unvaccinated staff, those who are foregoing receiving the vaccine, receive a rapid test at the front door each morning. Upon arrival, um, the, the requirement for the state or the recommendation from the state was um, to do it weekly, but we are operating in abundance of caution and doing it every day. Um, so that is what has been occurring since that mandate came out in September. Thank you. Um, there are some guidance updates pertaining to COVID as well from the CDC, which also trickled down to IDPH and ISV. Um, this information was shared with our staff at our staff meeting this past Friday, as well as um, our parents who attended the parent coffee this past Saturday. Um, <clears throat> so basically in a nutshell, isolation and quarantine are shortened. Um, for somebody who does actually test positive for COVID, now they're required to isolate for at least five days. Um, and if they're symptomatic, if they're not feeling well and having symptoms, um, that's five days from the date their symptoms started. Um, if they're not having any symptoms, if um, you know, they were just part of our screening testing and um, you know, just had a test for surveillance, um, then it's from the date of that positive test. Um, so this doesn't necessarily mean that it's only five days that they have to isolate. It can range anywhere from five to 10 days. Um, individuals, this is just part of Lindap's illness policy. Um, it's also consistent for COVID. Um, the individual has to be fever-free for a full 24 hours before returning to the building and symptoms have to be um, mostly or pretty much fully resolved and they just have to be feeling better in general. Um, for close contacts, um, if they're not considered fully vaccinated, so two weeks past their second dose of the Pfizer or Moderna or two weeks past the Johnson & Johnson, um, they're required to quarantine for five days from the last exposure. Um, so this is shortened from that 10 to 14 down to five. Um, if no symptoms develop, if they stay asymptomatic that entire five days, they can come back after that fifth day. Um, testing is recommended on that fifth day when they come back. Um, so either that day five or upon their return to school, because sometimes that day five falls on a weekend. Um, the other piece of this is that the individual must continue to strictly mask for five more days until day 10. Um, so this means that individuals who are participating in this will need to eat at least six feet away from individuals until that day 10. Um, so they still have to, um, you know, kind of keep that, the masking and the, the distancing, the ideal distancing that we want until that day 10. Um, but the next slide is actually going to show um, an alternative to this close contact quarantine. Can you probably go to the next slide, Mr. LSU? Thank you. Um, the new alternative for quarantining um, due to a close contact, this is you know, considered for our um, not fully vaccinated staff and students as well, is called test to stay. Um, this has already um, kind of been 
you know, being done across the state, but our transmission level was at a level where they didn't want us um, to participate in this, but now they've cleared it for everybody. Um, so individuals who are a close contact, if they don't have symptoms and were exposed during the regular school day. Um, so this is from our 815 to 330. Um, this excludes extracurricular activities like basketball practice, after school, um, all those other programs. Um, these individuals can stay at school as long as they have two negative rapid test results. Um, so testing should occur on day zero, which is the day that they're actually considered exposed. And then another time before day seven, they actually recommend between day five and seven. Um, so if the individual has those two negative rapid test results, they're able to stay um, when they successfully complete a test to stay. Um, however, if they test positive during this, the normal protocol is followed. We've been following all year. Um, the individual would immediately be isolated, um, not allowed to return to the building until cleared, and then we would notify the health department as well. Um, so that's the updated guidance that we are now following from IDPH and ISV. Um, and I can take any questions that anybody has. Question, Nurse James. Um, so if they are fever free, is that with? Out medication? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Without the use of, you know, having to take Tylenol or ibuprofen and or anything like that. That's Thank correct. You. Yep. I have a question. This is board member Williams Wilford. Yes. Um, that's wonderful that you guys are testing every day. I like that. <laughs> you, can't be, you can never be too cautious, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm curious with all the breakthrough cases with individuals who are fully vaccinated or or fully vaccinated, including a booster, how individuals are still um, contracting COVID some kind of way with no symptoms. So I'm wondering if fully vaccinated staff at any point are required to take um, a rapid test or a, a COVID test of some sort. Um, at this time, it's not required per our guidance, but that being said, a lot of our staff here operate the same way as you do. Um, and they do, we do have staff that come and test um, twice a week, sometimes a little bit more than that, even if they're not experiencing symptoms, um, if they are fully vaccinated. So that is offered. Um, it's not required at this time, but there are a lot of our staff that are taking, uh, that, are taking that um, opportunity that's available to them. And it's been pretty successful so far. I'll tell you this, this, everything changes so frequently, it makes you feel really insecure about anything. You know, I mean, it changes so quickly. Mm -hmm. Who would ever think 24 hours without a fever? Okay. I, I have different examples of what I've seen. Mm -hmm. You know, it spikes and you know, I just think it's interesting. But uh, this is an unpredictable, you it know. It has been the whole time. Yeah. Any other questions from any board members at all? Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Jeremiah is on his way. Okay. Good evening, um, Board of Education, administration, um, staff, community members. Um, this evening, I'm going to talk to you about our MTSS system, um, specific, the multi-tiered systems of support, specifically the work that our teachers are doing with our students during our intervention blocks around academics. This data on this chart represents the last four to five weeks of um, work from students in the progress monitoring data. The teachers are using grade level um, work assignments and assessments in these intervention blocks. And so if you look at our first column, you see for tier two, these are students who tested between the 40th and the 60th percentile in the MAP test um, in October. So we had 66 students um, working on reading skills. And for the school-wide mastery, we have 76% of them mastering those skills. And these are the skills that have been assessed. 
In math, at tier two, we have 61 students and we have 64% mastery of the skills they're working on. Tier, tier, tier three are those students who tested at 40% or below on the map test in October. So we have 102 in reading and they have 65% mastery and we have 31 in math at tier three and they have 42% uh, mastery. So you can see we have some success in our reading, um, moving students, those students who are approaching proficiency, um, but we still have some more work to do in math. Um, teachers are still looking at the data. They are analyzing it, um, working on new action plans and implementing new strategies to really get to those students who need some more support in math. And I expect that when I come before you again, we'll have an increase in students mastering math skills. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kenobi. Good evening, Board of Education guest teachers. It's always a pleasure to start talking about discipline and just piggybacking off the same amount of energy and passion I had last time. I'm really gonna make your day. Um, with MTSS, this all flows. This is just not one effort. This is countless hours of people and hard work. And as uh, Mrs. Harrod said, you know, it's just, we're living in a different world. So I'm going to just go to a very big highlight here. I'm going to skip this slide real quick. This is about location, but I'm really going to emphasize this slide in particular, the month to month uh, report from October to December. And I want you just to look at those numbers. Those are positive trends in the downward uh, percentage for referrals dropped. Pay attention specifically for that sixth grade cohort that I was talking about, painting that story at the beginning of the year, look at that percentage drop, 75%. But look at across the board. If that doesn't give you goosebumps, I don't know what does. This is effort on Lindop staff at its entirety. And I shared this at the staff meeting on Friday, and you want to talk about uplifting news in a hard type of world that we're living in when everything's so negative, this should make everybody very proud of themselves. This is just not me sharing data, but this is just sharing good news with students and staff. Job well done. Job well done. 59% drop in referrals from October to December. Job well done. If that doesn't give you a warm and cozy inside, I'm getting goosebumps right now. And I already presented this once. But if you want to take a look at your board books, there is a, uh, some information in regards to the categories of uh, behaviors that we're seeing, but the interventions that are put in place. This is not one thing. This is multiple things of people working together with interventions. So I just want to applaud publicly the, the countless hours that Lindop staff dedicate to our children. It's paying off. Stay with it, especially in today's times. We got this together. We're in this together. So job well done, but I'm, I'm ready to take any questions from the board, any comments? No question, just a comment. I would say congratulations, job well done. Very impressive. Thank you. What do you think attribute to all the improvements? Honestly, it's a team effort, it's interventions. It's, every, it's actually everybody working together. And it's everybody, when you have a team member going down, it's somebody else picking that up. Because there, there's no lie here that we have lost staff. We have lost staff to isolate to COVID and other people to fill in, including students. But there's always somebody there ready, ready to go and ready to work with our kids. And just being consistent, being together. Believe me, this is, this is not easy. This is monumental in the type of work that we're doing now. We're dealing with a whole different world, and we all know this. 
You know, the U.S. had 70 percent drop in attendance last week. That's all over the news. We're living in a totally different world. But I, I have to hand it. We got some we have some very hardworking individuals like yourself that care about this school. And it goes across a lot of uh, every every corridor in this hallway and walls. So it takes it takes a lot of effort. You're welcome. If I, if I might add anything to that, Kenobi, um, it just shows how hard of the work that you guys are doing. Um, of course, we're not in this building every day. <clears throat> and of course, we don't hear everything, but it, it definitely shows the work that the staff, your administration, um, the paraprofessionals, teachers, everybody is doing for these students and their success. So great job, Linda, family. Uh, I, it makes me feel good on the inside. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Mr. Kenobi, for really just taking this um, bull by the horns and not giving up with it and just keep pushing it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Mr. Valentine. Good evening, Board of Education, community and staff. I want to talk to you guys tonight about the Green Ribbon uh, effort that we're pushing here at the school. Uh, we've been following Green Ribbon standards for a while, but we really have been wrapping it up lately uh, to become a Green Ribbon school. Uh, Illinois Energy Bill recently just passed. They want buildings to be 100% carbon free by 2030. And they also want to uh, wrap up renewable energy as much as possible. They want 7% by, uh, move from 7% to 40% by 2030 and 50% uh, by 2045. So uh, our current goals right now is to reduce the current utility spending and exposure to underpredicted rates as, as much as possible, experience cost savings year after year with renewable energy. And we also getting the students involved through the STEM program um, because renewable energy is a big thing now, and it's going to be a lot of careers and in, involved in, in that. And we also want to be visible and committed to stability. The three pillars for the Green River program is to reduce energy impact, improve environmental wellness, and offer effective environmental stability in education. So here are some of the measures we have went through at the school to, to achieve those goals. One of them is our automatic habit control system and our variable speed drives for our HVAC motors. Uh, during these, getting these installed, we have a 15% energy reduction, which is a saving of 10,000 a year uh, after we got that installed inside the building. Also, we have fully LED lights inside the facility with motion sensors and dimmable lights. Uh, this was a reduction in 62% in wattage once we installed all these LED lights. And other measures we have inside the building is also we have motion hand soap sensors, uh, paper towel motion sensors, and also the water washing basins and also motion sensors. Something recently we added here inside the school is the bottle filled water stations. Uh, we maybe added these a couple months ago and right now we have a total of 3,212 bottles that have been saved by using these water fountains. And also, we also have a recycling program here at Lindop that we have been going, we always have here, but now we wanna get the students involved. We wanna be able to measure how much we are reducing uh, monthly and also have the students more excited about recycling by knowing they, how much they recycle uh, monthly and yearly. Any questions? So what would they, would, do they get anything for increasing the recycling? Yes, we also, we're gonna to try to get incentives to, to like a competition, whatever wing have the most recycling might get something for, for their efforts, yes. That's wonderful. Uh, Cheryl Griffin, are you recycling the paper also or just the plastic? No, it's gonna be paper and plastic yes. products. 
and we'll have the students go around maybe twice a week collecting it and we'll be able to measure how many gallons we have actually recycled. Uh, this is Drill David. Um, I can say I've seen it in the classrooms and it's working wonders and to Ms. Griffin to answer your question also in our class we do do the paper and if we don't reuse the water bottle we'll put our water bottles and plastic bottles in there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. And that concludes our presentation. Okay. Uh, Brian Dawson, I make a motion that the board approve the regular open session meeting minutes for December 21st. 2021. Board Member Hanna. Any board member Hannah? Yay. Board Member Dawson. Yay. Board Member Morris. Yay. Board Member Taylor. Yay. Board Member Williams Wolford. Yay. Yay. Board Member Joyner here. Yay. Board Member Griffin. Yay. Student board member David. Yay. Okay, motion carries. Need a motion to approve the close. <coughs> um, board member Hannah, I make a motion that the board approve the regular closed session meeting minutes for December 21st, 2021. Cheryl Griffin, I second. Board member Joyner here. Yes. Board member Griffin. Yay. Student board member David. Yeah. Board member Hannah. Yay. Board member Dawson. Yay. Board member Williams Wolford. Yay. Board member Taylor. Abstain. Board member Morris. Yay. Motion carries. Okay. I need to. Oh, this is that one already. I'm sorry. I need a board. Hmm. That's right. Yeah, that's it's right. The special board meeting is correct. I thought we did we didn't do that yet. I thought we did this. No, we did. Okay. Thank you. I need a um, motion to approve the special board meeting, please. Cheryl Griffin, I make a motion to approve the special board meeting minutes for December 23rd, 2021. And a second, please. A second, Ms. Hannah. Any revisions, questions? Roll call, please. Board member Morris. Yay. Board member Taylor. Yay. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I abstain. I'm sorry. And then for number two, I need to abstain as well. I'm sorry. Thank you. Board member Williams Wolfer. Yay. Student board member David. Yay. Board member Dawson. Yeah. Board member Joyner Harris. Yay. Board member Griffin. Yay. Board member Hannah. Yay. Motion carries. Hey. I need a motion to approve the policies. I think that's I, I, Mr. I'll Dawson do over there. <laughs> Mr. I'm Dawson, responsible for it. Right ahead, Mr. Dawson. <laughs> this is my fault. I, I'll, Mr. I'll, Dawson, I'll do I, I'm gonna uh, do some knitting over here while you right, read that exactly. motion. <laughs> yeah, everybody, uh, you know, take five. Uh, <laughs> I make a motion that the board approve the first read and approval of policies 4-165 awareness and prevention of child sexual abuse and grooming behaviors, 220 powers and duties of the Board of Education, 2105 ethics and gift ban, 2110 qualifications, term and duties of board officers, 220, I'm sorry, um, 2120 board member development, 220 board of education meeting procedure, 2260 Uniform grievance procedure, 340 superintendent, 350 administrative personnel other than the superintendent, 360 administrative responsibility of the building principal, 460 purchases and contracts, 4120 food services, 4160 environmental quality of buildings and grounds, 4170 safety, 4175 convicted child sex offenders screening and notifications, 
510, equal employment opportunity and minority recruitment. 530, hiring process and criteria. 550, drug and alcohol free workplace. E-cigarette, tobacco and cannabis prohibition. 590, abused and neglected child reporting. 5100, staff development program. 5120, employee ethics, conduct and conflict of interest. 5125, employee technology use, communication through technology and use of personal technology on district property. 5150, personnel records, 5185, family and medical leave, 5200, terms and conditions of employment and dismissal. 5220, substitute teachers, 5250, leaves of absence. 5330, sick days, vacation, holidays and leaves. 615, school accountability, 620, school year calendar and day. 650 school wellness, 6120 education of children with disabilities, 6180 extended instructional programs, 6340 student testing and assessment program, 710 equal educational opportunities, 720 harassment of students prohibited, 730 student assignment, 760 residents, 770 attendance and truancy, 780 release time for religious instruction observance, 7150 agency and police interviews, 7180 prevention of and response to bullying, intimidation and harassment, 7200 suspension procedures, 7210 expulsion procedures, 7240 conduct code for participants in extracurricular activities, 7250 student support services, 7260 exemption from physical activity, 7290 suicide and depression awareness and prevention, 7305, student athlete concussions and head injuries. Restrictions, 7310, restrictions on publications. Elementary, 7340, student records. 7345, use of educational technologies. Student data privacy and security. And 8100, relations with other organizations and agencies as presented. And a second, please. I'm sure. proudly taking that. What? Sure. Cheryl Griffin. Oh, I think okay. she already did it. Penny is thank you. All right. Any any revisions? Wake up now. Is there is, are there any revisions after that motion? Questions at all? All right. Without further ado, we need a roll call, please. Thank you, Mr. Dawson. Board member Joyner here. Yay. Board member Griffin. Yay. Board member Hannah. Yay. Board member Dawson. Yay. Board member Morris. Yay. Board member Taylor. Yay. Board member Williams Wolfer. Yay. Student board member David. Yay. Motion carries. I need a motion uh, to approve the first read on workplace harassment, please. Cheryl Griffin, I make a motion that the board approve the first read policy 520 workplace harassment prohibited. But, excuse me, 660 curriculum content, 6135 accelerated placement program, 7160 student appearance, and 7190 student behavior with district edits. And a second, please. A second, yeah. Any questions, comments, revisions? If there are none, roll call, please. Board member Griffin. Yay. Board member Hannah. Yay. Board member Joyner Harris. Yay. Board member Morris. Yay. Board member Taylor. Yay. Board member Dawson. Yay. Board member Williams Wolford. Yay. Board student board member David. Yay. Motion carries. Okay, need a recommendation to approve the concussion policy, please. Board member Hannah. I make a motion that the board approve to adopt policy 7305 student athlete concussion and head injuries five year review review date of January 18th, 2022, as presented. And the second, please. Brian Dawson, I second. Any questions, revisions, or comments? Roll call, please. Board member Griffin. Yay. Board member Hannah. Yay. Board member Dawson. Yay. Board member Morris. Yay. Board member Taylor. Yay. Board member Williams Wolford. Yay. Student board member David. Yay. Board member Joyner here. Yay. Motion carries. Motion to approve 
the superintendent attending uh, the summit in New Orleans, please. Board member Hannah, um, I make a motion that the board approve that Superintendent Dr. Janice Jackson attend the District Administration Superintendent Summit in New Orleans um, Friday, February 16th through and not including February 18th, 2022 at no cost to the district. And a second, please. Cheryl Griffin, I second. Hey, Dr. Jackson, tell us about how that's gonna be done. Yes, and so District Administration, um, they actually do work for district administrators throughout the country, not just for Illinois. And for this year, they invited 70 superintendents to attend the summit. And um, they cover all costs, including traveling, lodging, food, and anything that you might do other than shopping there. Um, it is all covered and uh, that I will come back and bring back some information. Any questions or comments? Okay, roll call, please. Board member Joyner Harrett. Yay. Board member Griffin. Yay. Board member Hannah. Yay. Board member Dawson. Yay. Board member Morris. Yay. Board member Taylor. Yay. Board member Williams Wolfer. Yay. Student board member David. Yay. Motion carries. Okay, we're moving right along with board president's report. The only thing I wanted to communicate was, um, I think we talked about how IESB pulled out of NSBA. They pulled out of participating in the uh, National School Board Association Conference over many, many things. Part of it was um, mismanagement of funds. Uh, not allowing a voice at the national level regarding um, legislation, you know, which was really a big one. But I am not sure if you all realize that the, the biggest issue was that NSBA sent a letter on behalf of all of the districts, I mean, all of the states, and they sent it to President Biden. And they talked about how throughout the country, a lot of the parents are being uh, unruly regarding, you know, uh, COVID, the mask wearing and all that. So the president of NSBA sent a letter asking him to initiate legislation. And I guess he called parents domestic terrorists and hate, you know, of hate crimes. So that was something that infuriated many states. So I wanna let you know, as, as of today, there's 19 states that pulled out of NSBA with seven pending. So just to let you know, it's not just Illinois. And, and right now they're thinking about starting another organization. And what is on everybody's you know, thoughts are, are, are Cube, they know how important Cube is to the nation. Uh, um, so, so just to let you know, there's more to come. I just want to update you about that because that's something that we always attended historically. Okay. Uh, moving on to superintendent's report. Thank you. And just also, we just got word today we had applied for the Magna Awards grant uh, through NSBA, and we were just notified today that we would not be uh, recognized, nor would our application. Uh, be reviewed because of the pullout from NSBA. Thank you. All right, superintendent's report. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, and so our spelling bee, so excited about the spelling bee. We have a winner for the first time, fourth grade. This mister came in first place for our spelling bee winner, fourth grade, but she won in first through fourth as well as fifth through eighth. And so we are very excited about her uh, winning. We are super excited about supporting her in the next round for the, um, the other, the regional spelling bee, which will be held at Lindop for the first time, um, I believe ever. Okay, 
ever. It'll be here at Lindop this time. So we're excited about that. And congratulations to Kiana Mister. Next, we have what our district community relations, our PTSO is also so amazing, always uh, collaborating with us. And they did provide a holiday cake and candy canes for all staff members. That concludes my report. Any questions? Dr. Jenkins, I have one question. Yes. So, oh, um, the NSBA said that we would not be considered or our application looked at. Does their policy say that you have to be a part of the organization in order to apply for that award? We will check. We will check. Absolutely. I will check. Were you going to say, Mrs. Gary? I was going to say, unless you are part of NSBA, you can't, you know, attend it at all and be a part of any of the so I'm sure it's in there, Penny, but it's a good question to ask mm -hmm. her. I'm positive it's in there. Thank you. Because it doesn't look good for them to, uh, you know, right now, because they're not very, uh, they're losing a lot. Dr. Betts, lot. did you have any other information on that? I do, thank you, Dr. Jackson. I received the email this afternoon regarding um, that our application will not be reviewed. Um, and they did say that their bylaws say that our state has to belong to the NSBA in order for that to take place, so. Thank you. Okay. Thank you Thank for you. that question, Ms. Williams-Wolford. A student board member, oh, Dr. Jackson, you finished? No, I'm done. Yes, I'm done. Okay. Student board member report. I have nothing. Uh, to report on for this board meeting. Thank you, board member Jurep, David. Okay, moving on to committee reports. There was no finance meeting. Uh, the next meeting will be to be is to be determined. No, per, there was no personnel committee meeting at this time. Pace governing board meeting. I know it's going to be Wednesday tomorrow. The next yes, it'll be tomorrow uh, night. Um, I will speak briefly on pace and closed session. Thank you. Safety SEL. Uh, that committee meeting is also to be determined. Policy committee meeting. Mr. Dawson, as well as Ms. Williams Wolford, you all had one January 12th. Yes, uh, the result of which you saw in, in our um, recent new business here, a lot came out. Um, what stuck out most to me, I think what we were uh, talking about, there was a lot of um, policies on protection of children. So you saw a lot about um, bullying and um, uh, trainings for, you know, uh, child reporting and abuse and neglect, et cetera. Uh, there's a lot of that in there. And uh, Dr. Jackson, is there anything you wanted to talk about specific policies that were changing? You know what, no specific policies that we're changing, but there has been a lot of uh, change to the policies uh, because of the Title IX regulations and the changing. And so there's a lot in there now about grooming and how to recognize grooming and also how to uh, report if such things have happened. And so that was really the bulk of the uh, policy in this press plush issue of 108. Thank you. Next meeting is uh, for the policy team is February 2nd at 4.30 p.m. Here a CIA meeting uh, for Mr. Morris, Ms. Taylor to be determined technology meeting, Mr. Hanna, Ms. Taylor. Uh, next meeting to be determined as well. Strategic planning committee meeting, uh, Ms. Williams Wolford and uh, Ms. Joyner Harrod. That's also uh, an ad hoc meeting. Our board referendum committee will probably be up and running sooner than we expect. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dawson and Mr. Hannah, mm -hmm. be ready. All right. So policy the only one that's meeting now. Y'all got me doing all these meetings. <laughs> and everybody else is too busy to Yeah, nothing else. You know, you earn you gotta earn your pay. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Um, moving on to public comments. Are there? There, there are, are none. none. There are none. Wonderful. We're at 629. All I gotta say, I need a motion to go into executive session, please, at uh, 6.29 p.m. Cheryl Griffin. Yes. I move that the board go into closed session under 5 ILCS 120 slash 2 C1489 and 10 to discuss the appointment 
employment compensation, discipline, or performance of specific employees of the public body, evidence or testimony presented in open hearing or in closed hearing where specifically authorized by law, security procedures, school building safety and security, student disciplinary cases, and the placement of individual students in special education programs and other matters retaining to individual students at 6.30 p.m. And a second, please. I second, Board Member Hanna. And a roll call. Yes, Board Member Joyner Harris. Yay. Board Member Griffin. Yay. Board Member Hanna. Yay. Board Member Dawson. Yay. Board Member Morris. Absent. Board Member Taylor. Yay. Board Member Williams Wolfer. Yay. Student Board Member David. Yay. Thank you. I've got to go down and print something, guys. So we'll resume in about 10 minutes. Thank you. Oh, I see. Happy birthday.